me and uh, nine. Wow. Me nine he, he's ten. He's nine, I'm ten. sorry about my English. Is <laughs> no English good? Okay, don't it's, worry. Uh, it's uh, half and so half. Are you good. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> it's Saudi English. Saudi. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he's a he's an English teacher. Used to English be. teacher. Used yeah. to be. Oh, used to be. Used to be. Yeah, so used you to. can teach him. Halas. Yeah, but he's trying. I, I can't help him with the accent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know stuck. English from books. Yeah, from books, yes. Yeah, so. Well, at least it's better than from movies. Shit. I came from the streets. <laughs> from the streets of, Jet, of Mecca? That's, that's the language. Yeah. No streets in Mecca, brother. <laughs> yeah. yes, All the, good streets. Yes, there is. It's good streets. But the good streets is Mecca, mashallah. We grew up, we grew up on, on hip-hop music. Yes, yes. Especially my generation. Uh, okay. I was born in 85. 85. Yeah. Inshallah, so, wow. Yeah, so both. Yeah, uh, yeah two wars. <laughs> two wars. <laughs> two, wars yeah. in the, two wars in the making. I was there. Wow. But, so uh, most of my generation grew up on hip-hop music. We couldn't yes. understand nothing. Yeah. Wow. Was, but th- we felt the energy. You know, wow, we felt wow, we felt wow. we felt what's going on. You know, Just, but th- you didn't really know what was saying. Yeah, but we, when we have beef with somebody, we be hitting this. <laughs> we be hitting this music. <laughs> You know, we, we don't understand we, what's we, going we on. We like but the beats. We like the. Subhanallah. Yeah, yeah. But don't really know what's happening. Yeah, and the only reason I I I, I took the English major in yes. the university was for me to understand what's going on. Wow. You know, not the yeah, language, yeah, yeah. just the culture and the, the things culture, behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it. It's so lyrically. Uh, it's like poetry. Almost. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like poetry. Uh, <laughs> it's artistically beautiful. You know, yeah, if you like, understand what's rap, going on, it's it's like like how the Arabs, you guys have the poetry. Yeah. If you really think about it, rap is poetry. They just put music behind it. Yes. You know, here you go. Like the words, we have certain topics. We have, I went to an event and I seen like two Arab groups. Yeah. Like they was doing this poetry. Whenever one person say one last word, he's pick up from that word. Like, it's like how we freestyle. Yes. Yeah. Here you go. Subhanallah. So yeah. it's similar. Did they start now? Yeah, we'll start from different. Oh. Big. And you got to take some videos and send me. You got the new i. You got the new iPhone. Yeah. Then you send me the video. Then you then you airdrop it for me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, brother. Oh, thank you, thank you. I just grab. Can I have some of this? Yeah, of course, man. Water is for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> is it for Mecca? Is it that? Is that? You don't. You don't need that blood pressure now. Just, just wait for it to cool down. So, uh, so yeah, hot these days. Yeah, it is, especially here. Yeah, especially yeah. in Riyadh. Yeah, it's very hot. Yeah, you know. I was so confident going out, with, going yes. out with my convertible style. You know, <laughs> no hat, no hair, nothing. Yeah, so you good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know why is Riyadh so hot? Because it's highland. I see. Yeah, but you know, last week they I think it was the closer. hottest days on earth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even California, my brother was sending me video. Um, it was similar to the the temperature in Riyadh, even in LA. So last couple of days have been the hottest, subhanAllah, hottest on earth. SubhanAllah, yes. You know? And uh, the thing is, yes, um, uh, this heat is, is, is even in the night, man. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> but I think even when you go outside at night, it's like halas. It, it, it's, it's a good time to make bacon and eggs without using any gas. <laughs> <laughs> no gas, nothing. You can nothing. save electricity. You can huh? save electricity. It's the I best place. I think so, it's good for the nature also. The, this yeah. heat. I don't know what nature you... Maybe the desert, you know? Almost <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> but it's, it's wisdom behind it. Subhanallah. Yeah, subhanallah. Whatever Allah allows is wisdom. We, yeah, we accept that. it. Stay humble. Stay humble. Yeah, that's that's what's happening. If this is hot, the fire is hotter. You know? Just <laughs> stay humble. That's that's the message. That's true, the true. Message. Yeah, so so Mr. Muta, it's really yes, it's really uh what it's an honor being it's honest, honest mind, brother. Yes. Honest uh, mind. really it's like, you know, we grew up uh looking at your music and we grew up uh Understanding yeah, yeah. what's going on, you know, it's, it's a yes. big timeline between you and you and I. Uh, and uh, the thing, the transition that happened. Uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. For me, I felt so happy. Thank yes, you, brother. Too. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, brother. I, I follow you on Instagram. I saw the whole okay. thing. I know what's going on. Alhamdulillah. And yes. uh, uh, one of those days, one of those days, you just had an offer in your restaurant, Smoky Beards. Yes. So if you have a beard, you have a discount. Or something. We still have this. You, you get yeah. you get a free Both drink. Yeah, yeah. You we have the same beard, the same T-shirt. Inshallah, you get a free drink there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is what happened. I'm yes. I'm an actor. Yes. Stand-up comedian slash actor, whatever. Yes. You yes. know this is the. So are you like did are you? Can I see you on Netflix or no? What's the Saudi version of Netflix? 
Shahid, 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 Shahid. 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 So you have you guys know Shahid. So yeah, we've been in Comedy Central. Did a couple of this. I and will that. check you guys out. See, you know, just funny. clean comedy. Abdul Aziz also does does comedy, sir. Huh? He does yes, comedy. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. He, uh, he does it as a way to to run away from home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. Don't call me. Have a set. <laughs> you know. So Sorry. so so what happened yes. is I, I've been uh, I wanted to go to the restaurant and yes. I heard that this discount is going on and yes I was like, just hurry up and do the order I want to do the shot let's do the shot okay let's do the shot ready ready let's just go to the makeup room I go to the makeup room we have to shave your beard wow. So they took it off, you know. Yeah, you should never I, let them take I, the beard I, I, off, brother. I went there fighting the, words. Yeah, I, I went there to the to the to, trying, to the uh, restaurant. Uh, you, you'd get nothing. Yeah, it's, hello, I used to have a beard. No discount. Look, it's greenish. No, I'm sorry, you don't have the whole thing. So <laughs> you should have showed them a picture. I, it, it seems yeah. like this is. They were like, go. no, this is like Rick Ross. It's not you. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not you. So I was like, oh, believe yeah. me. No. So, so the but, but, restaurant, yes, yes. big Thank applause, you, man. Thank big you. applause Thank for you. the place. Thank you, brother. Thank One you. of the cleanest yeah, joints the, over there. The I, I, I tried brother. the, I don't know. Did maybe, you try all of the, menu? the ribs? The ribs. Did you? They, <laughs> I think the cow is there consensually. Like, <laughs> she gave up <laughs> she gave, she the gave. life <laughs> for <laughs> happily, like, take me, please. Yeah, we got it. The, the, you know, the people here, they love meat. You know, yeah. that's a good thing about. Doing like, and also in Saudi Arabia, the nightlife is coffee, food, restaurant, gathering because of the culture. Yeah. Inshallah, you guys never lose this culture because it's very important how you you guys are together. You know what I mean? You don't really, yeah. I think when I first seen a Saudi eating by himself, because now you see it more and more. Yeah. yeah. But before when I first moved here, you would never see a Saudi in a restaurant eating alone. Yeah. And I've seen a few and I'm like, hey, something ain't right. But most of them studied outside of Saudi. Yeah, they you know what I mean? There. But you, because of the culture, you guys like to break bread together. Yeah, you know, chill together. You know what I mean. This is my homie. <laughs> this is my homie. He was. He was like, you know, we used to be the same weight. Yeah. Willa, you yeah. know, uh, Allah, good. Yeah, he lost weight. But Mashallah. but the other way, you know what I'm saying? The the, yeah, the, the medical way. way, you know. But he did it. But he did it. Alhamdulillah. Now this is the thing. We used to be like, you know. Restaurant headers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but you guys can still be yeah. restaurant headers. It's like, what, what are we going to do share today? the food, halas. <laughs> yeah. We order for one. We order, order for, for one? We order for one, and I used to, you know, wow. my, my, my insulin needle's ready. Sa, sa, sa. Let's do this. Health is important, though, bro. Health you got to take care of yourself. Health I lost important. two people, actually. I lost two people inside of me. Like, I was, wow. I was 140 kilos. So, so you lost, mashallah. Yeah. Wait, how much you now, if you don't mind? Now I'm like... Can we say it on the... T is you recording? Can we say it on the television? If you know what, I'm keeping it 100, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> like, but alhamdulillah, it's important. Weight and, and health is very important. I'm going to tell you a story. There yes. was a restaurant near to us. Yes. And he has the, that offer. You can eat all over you want or until you, you are eat. full. And we shut him down. We shut, we shut the pizza we shut the down. restaurant down. <laughs> yeah, we did. Definitely ain't going to put this yeah. around me. Yeah. <laughs> shut, shut the whole thing down. Wow. The whole operation. They said that was a eat with all what you can eat. Wow, so, <laughs> so, not, so what not, is, what is your favorite us. food, if, if you don't mind me asking? So, for me, um, I, love, uh, I love Italian food. Italian? Yeah, I love, yes. I love uh, what do you call Mexican food. Mexican, mashallah. Uh, Very good. All that white, no salt, no... <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No spices. I, I, I don't eat That's that. That's European food. Yeah, food. I don't. Yeah, you got the, the closer you go to the people, the color the food. Yeah. Get the, spicy. the more spices, the better. You know what I mean? I like. Hey, what about food. you? Soul food. Yeah, yeah. me. I like uh, Arabic food. Mandi. Arabic food. Mendi. Sa sa sa. Because it's all tasty. You know yes. what I mean? Arabic food. Mexican. Mexican food is actually, I, I believe, some of the best food on the planet. Yes. My mother's Puerto Rican, so we kind. It's, it's Latina. Yeah. Like, like, so we kind of have our little. You know, and, and even in boxing, the, the biggest rivalries between the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans and boxing. So even when it comes to like food and stuff, the culture is different. Yeah. But yeah. when it comes to food from the Latin world, I got to say Mexican is number one. Uh, it is. Even I, my I, Puerto Ricans I, might get upset. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tried that in LA. That is a lot yeah, of Yeah, Mexican. Yeah, because, you know, but the food in LA, the Mexican food in LA is not really... It's, I would call it California Mexican style. Uh, you go to Mexico and say, give me like a taco, they might they might laugh at you. Like, what? Yeah. They give you real taco, real Mexican <laughs> yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. LA, they, they remixed it. Yeah, in California. You know, we have the same problem when you go on TikTok and uh, yes. you see you see these people try to ruin the, 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 the culture. You know, this is... Uh, this yeah, is... 
tahini uh, <laughs> shawarma with uh, fal- falafel. Oh, yeah, they mess it up. They, they mess stuff. it up, you know. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, chocolate yeah, yeah. hummus. Imagine that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> chocolate, hummus. chocolate hummus. That's yeah, what they call they it. Hummus. hummus. How you got to yeah. do the hum? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they mess it up with chocolate that Chocolate hummus. Come yeah, on, Yeah, they man. messed it up, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that was furating. You yeah, know, I can feel it. See that? But the good thing about Saudi, mashallah, I think every food, you can every culture, food type of food you will find in this country. Yeah, like everything you could imagine, we have here, and some places more than certain. Like Riyadh is so multicultural. Yeah, when it comes to like different foods, different restaurants, like more than some places in America. Yeah, like you can get anything: Armenian food, French food, Arab food, African food, Asian food. Everything we we find in Riyadh, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, so it's a blessing. And it's the desert, so yeah, yeah. alhamdulillah. So so for me, <laughs> I, I feel you know, and in, uh, in Saudi, when you you uh, Saudi come yes. up to you like it, it grows up on you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's yes. like uh, you have to uh, if, if you love the Saudis and you're into the culture, yes. you stop picking up on things and d- sure. different words, uh, different cultures, or different uh, yes. things you do in your daily life. Yeah, like it's becoming sure. a, a custom. For sure. Yeah. So what for you as a for you as a, a Muslim here for 12 years? You've been here in Riyadh, 13 years. 13 years. years. Yes. So of course you you've picked up something here and there. I, I could tell you, to be honest, yeah. what I picked up, um, when I first came to Saudi Arabia, I remember yeah. I was very, you know, very aggressive. Because America makes you aggressive. Like, I get America, it messes you up. You might want to, you, 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 you guys, no, this is the truth. It's nothing bad. Yeah, you ain't yeah. going to say, it's not politics, it's the yeah. reality. Especially the bathrooms. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, re- <laughs> the reality of <laughs> the American culture, we have aggressive culture. Yeah. Believe it or not, even though, you know, compared to Europe, American yeah. people are the nicest. Meaning to strangers, like they're friendly, they speak. But my culture in the black community, the Latin community, we aggressive. Yeah. To the point, if somebody look at you a certain way, you think he wants to do something to you. Yeah. So I, I grew up with that mentality. Okay. So when I came to Saudi Arabia, I had to get past that. So one of the things I learned is that the people here are so friendly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I first came and people staring at me and I'm like, I'm fresh from America. So I'm like, what are you looking at? <laughs> then I realized they just, they just know I'm not from here. They're very friendly. Yeah. So it, it, I had to learn patience. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had to learn some patience here, except for the driving. Bro, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. We might <laughs> yeah. have to double record this. Yeah. Send me this yeah, keep it real, yeah. man. Yeah. I, wallahi, this is my opinion. Yeah. I'm starting to think the cars, the cars in Saudi Arabia are possessed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the reason why, because once you guys get inside the cars, you guys go crazy. Yeah. Drive in and cut people off. But then when you get yeah. out the cars, you nice. Ayaka la further. But inside it. the car, you don't get nobody, no space to I, it's like two different personalities. Uh, we we call it the Hajwala demon. <laughs> you know, once you're in the car, this is the Hajwala demon, you know. You turn, lad, they switch once yeah, you're in the car. They I'm like, switching, <laughs> like they, everybody is the enemy now. Yes, but then yeah. when they get out, they're yeah. the nicest people, mashallah, to father, yeah. come eat with us. But once they're inside the car, I don't know what's going on we, in your we, cars. We, we learned from our fathers. <laughs> they used to drive when there is no a lot of cars, no traffic, yeah. 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 The, the, the no lines easy, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Medina, Medina people, man. And they Medina. nice, Medina people. Medina, yeah, yeah, if, if, if you like, if you like. Go with a guy like to 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 program X, you know, yes. to start a space, and you start <laughs> talking to this Medina guy like, oh, wallahi, there's a restaurant in Medina, you know. They, follow me. Mashallah. He'll be like, he will yeah. go down from space <laughs> to Medina <laughs> to show you the you restaurant yeah. for free and make it's, you eat there. Like there's, they're so calm. But you, but you know, I I I used to experience that here in Saudi in Riyadh. Yeah. When I first moved here, I remember when I I, I got lost. And I was asking some guy, I pulled up to his driveway yeah. and um, I asked him for directions. He literally got in his car and drove me like, yeah. I was shocked. In America, we don't do that. You follow somebody in America, halas, yeah. you might not come back home. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm like, what is this guy doing? He, mashallah, he was so nice mashallah. though. He took me to where I want to go. Then he's like, salam alaykum. Yeah, like, big, I, usually, I remember that. Big, big part big part of, uh, of, of, of the men foolishness here. Yes, in driving is that we believe in the afterlife. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, so yes, we don't I care. Said. Maybe we'll go there and have a yeah, have a better you, life. You, you gotta, they don't care crazy about this. On it. Yeah. But but to, to be fair, the driving has changed. Yeah, when the woman started driving, the less the more you st- I start getting these text messages with tickets. Like, yeah. damn, another one. Yeah, like yeah, another speeding. Like, <laughs> now they now they implementing the law like even more severe. Right. They are making the roads more safer now. Yeah. So it's nothing compared to so, when I first moved so here. We are the smartest country. Yeah, we waited uh, until the cars is 
فولي اوتوماتيك فولي اوتوماتيك ذا ذا رولز ار كاميرا ذن وي ليت ذيم درايف بيكوز لم تي لم تي لم تي سبحان الله والله ان ذا بيجينينغ اوف ذير درايف اند اي ام نوت تراين تو بي ذا تيبيكال كوميديان هير يس يس اوكي وين ذي ستارت درايفين ات واز اوكي ليتل تشاينيز كار نو هارم ناو ذي جوين فور باي فور مان ذي انجري ذي درايف باي ذير ايموشنز يو نو ذي دونت وونت نو ترافيك سو ذي كم كروسين اوفر يو لايك ا راديو بيج مونستر تراك جوين اون يو نو ذاتس بت ات ميد ذا رود سيفر لايك يو نو وات اي مين از ا فورنر ميبي You guys didn't pay attention to this, but as a foreigner, I seen how the roads became safer when they allowed the woman to drive. Yeah. They, they started implementing the laws. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Before that, it was law, like you could do whatever you want on the streets in Saudi Arabia. Like yeah. it wasn't even no lines. Yeah. yeah Now we got lines. How did it lie? Now we got lines. Especially man <laughs> after Sahar. Yeah, you know you cannot you cannot go you cannot go. Yeah, you, you know. get the t- and the good part about it, you get the text. When I tell my friends back in America, when I get a speeding ticket, it comes yeah. to my phone. They like, Ish, Kay, they don't understand. They like, don't know. Yeah. They like, how can I? How do they find your phone yeah. number? I said because everything is connected <laughs> yeah. to your card. Because America is is it, 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 the technology is not up to par like that. Mm. Okay. So yeah. Saudi, you get a text message. You like your whole mood is messed up. <laughs> yeah, text you text message. You in your bed and you feeling good. All of a sudden you like. <laughs> thousand riyals oh my god your whole mood is messed up for and the rest can, of the night <laughs> and you cannot deny you cannot deny that's your phone number i yeah. remember one time i tried to deny it. i was mad because i got like two three tickets in a row i was like man i know they i didn't do it i know i didn't get the ticket yeah and all of a sudden they showed me the picture and i was touching the phone like <laughs> i couldn't believe it i laughed like oh man yeah. the, 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 you, <laughs> when you get caught you always look stupid yeah you always look stupid they have a screen there and uh Yeah, you yeah. can you can see yourself doing yeah, I see that. Yeah, I I can believe it. I was like, wow, bro. You can caught him 4K. You cannot deny. You can't deny. This it. is you. you. Cannot, yeah, it was <laughs> me this like and, uh, and doing this with the phone like yeah, happy This like. is <laughs> you. This is you. You cannot deny. Who was me? Who that? <laughs> <laughs> your car, your face, yeah, your phone. You ain't getting out of this one. <laughs> It's you. <laughs> you know, you can you can you can fool somebody. You can for bro. real, bro. So, uh uh 13 years in Riyadh what what yes. the major changes you you felt as uh, someone who lives here I think um since you arrived till now the major changes I can say I think the attitude in the people yeah. I think when okay. I first moved to Riyadh because Riyadh is not like Jeddah when they used to people come in for you know so many people been coming to Jeddah because they go to Mecca they go to Medina yeah. so the people in Jeddah was used to foreigners So Riyadh, it took a little more time for them to get used to mm-hmm. foreigners. So when I first came, um, you can see that even though the people was nice, but the it, the shift of the people changed. The yeah. younger generation, their mindsets changed. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where I think, I don't know if it's social media or the telephone, because now it made culture into one. So now Saudis might understand, you know, what's happening in America, what's happening in the UK without, you know, leaving. So they more understanding to different people different ethnicities different foreigners so i i see more friendliness now you okay. know what i mean okay yeah and you haven't friendly. faced any uh trouble raising up your kids uh, for, for the culture nothing alhamdulillah. 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 alhamdulillah like hey raising kids here is a blessing okay yeah. you know what i mean we still smack the kids in the back of the head <laughs> hey, you can't call the cops on us here you call the cops the cops put the kid in the jail yeah, bro yeah 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 that's that's the thing now my, me and my wife having this you know I, i'm sorry to say it but you know uh, uh, uh White ways of raising up kids is not gonna <laughs> work. It's not gonna work here. You know, she's like, you have to raise the kid based on the new study. No, yeah, I I'm think- a smack him <laughs> because my daddy smack him. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes my daddy smack me. Sometimes it's good to put yeah. him in a place. My granddaddy you know? smack my daddy, so it's a chain. You know, it's a chain reaction. Yo, it slaps. <laughs> you know, I, I forgive my dad now for the days he used Stop. to 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 crack me up like that. Yeah, true. Because true. when he tells me he tells me stories about my grandfather. Yes, how he used to treat him. Yeah, I was, was like, harsh. I'm sorry for you, Dad, yeah, because yeah, yeah. he used to like, uh, you know, I want to teach him how to swim. He yeah. doesn't give him instruction, nothing. Here you go. Wow, that's you know? how they raise men. That's why the generations. My dad, it was different. This. They you generate know? like the older generation. Yeah. They was rude. They was men. Yeah, my like the older that, Saudis, you sit down with them. Even like a 90 year old Saudi man, he's still like, yeah. he still he's still have power. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I learned swimming. Wow. Me. My father told me. I ain't doing me. none of that now. I ain't yeah, doing yeah, that yeah. to my kids. My yeah. father told me, but I, I, I did it. Yeah, my, did it. Wow. My, my granddaddy, <laughs> my granddaddy has like, 
you know, he used to live the old ways. Uh, yes. a, a one farm, one yes, house made of mud. That's it. Wow. Yes. And one donkey. You know, you go, go, just go and wow. try to, you know, uh, uh, farm the land, whatever. Yes. So my father used, he he get wake him, uh, my, my granddad wakes him up with a stick. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. how you wake him up. Yeah. <laughs> say, wake up, like that. The old school way. Go, go farm. You know, wow, and he yeah. takes the donkey, go to the mountain, take some water, come down from the wow. mountain. If you die, you die. <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandfather that's had that's 13 that. kids. Mashallah. To two live. You know? Wow. <laughs> the other died of natural causes, yeah, maybe some spider. snakes, scorpions, whatever. Walla? Yeah. Wow. And that's Allah 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 I mean, yeah, I, I never yeah. saw him. I never met him. It's like 60, yeah. 70 years ago. Yes. But it, it's like they have no that no emotions, nothing towards tough because that's toughness, a tough lifestyle. You know? yeah. Yeah, so. And now uh, people are like, my Danny doesn't tell me and love me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> that's because uh, <laughs> that's because nowadays the phone, everything is on the phone with the kids. You know what I mean? Yeah, so they yeah. get to see how people live in, you know what I mean, in, in America and in, in certain countries. And yeah. They think they can implement it here, but everybody have their own culture everybody have their own lane yeah. but I respect the way your grandfather <coughs> raised his kids like this yeah. is the, the old school generation they made men Yeah, you know what I mean they made men so I respect that yeah okay Definitely. okay I had to pay like $20,000 to a psychiatrist after that but <laughs> but, but I'm street smart <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know yeah, but, I grew up the same way you know what I mean yeah. I grew up you know you get in trouble and, and, and if they have to yeah. my grandparents they will whoop us And I don't, and it does. I don't regret it. I don't have no ill feelings towards it. You know what I mean? Yeah, Because yeah, I know yeah. what they had to do. If it wasn't for those little chances, the time that they did, you know, spanked us. If it wasn't no spanking at all, we, I, we probably would have been worse than what we were. Yes. You know what I mean? You gotta fear. You have to have some respect and fear for authority. But I can really, literally count on my hands the times that I had to like really tap my kids. I can really count on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't really have to hit them. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? and, and that's the what do you say? The the you have to be in the middle way. Yeah, yeah, you gotta not be so balanced. extreme. Not yeah, so, you gotta be balanced. You not know so I mean? soft. Just nowadays, in the, the the worst thing for a kid is take their phone. That's worse. Than, they would tell you, no, dad, whoop me, but give <laughs> me my phone. Is, yeah. Oh my god! Or you can now just take their phone. You know what I mean? Because that's worse than a whooping. I, yeah. I saw one video. I saw one video on 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 TikTok, social media. Yes. One, one little Chinese kid. I don't want to be, uh, you know, sound. Racist or whatever, <laughs> but it was a Chinese kid, yeah, yeah. and they took his phone from him. The kid was yeah. like, while he's sleeping, I while saw he's him. sleeping, he's, he's he have the syndrome, you know. He, wow. he, he's yeah, used yeah, to yeah, the yeah, phone yeah. on he's his hand, yeah, yeah, because you get addicted to this. Right. That's poison, right. man. It's That's poison, of course. Nowadays, they hurt the kids. Like, yeah. they don't have the phone, and I'm I'm shocked because I'm like, man, if you. Like I, I I grew up in a time where from the morning or from the time I left school, yeah, I'm running around the streets. Like I'm outside playing until mm. it's time to go home. Till it's nighttime, I go to sleep. Repeat it the next day. Yeah. I didn't have no time to stay at home to play games or anything. I'm always outside. Yeah. You know what I mean? I miss those days. Yeah, I I, you know? I I I used to be this guy until Corona hits. <laughs> you know, uh, everything now is online. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. But even outside, you probably was in your car. Uh, that's that's see? yeah. But see, this is one of the mistakes being online. We ordered the same shipment. Yes, <laughs> 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 did the same shipment, and uh, what happened here? We look is, like uh, napkins. <laughs> <laughs> look at that! Would you look at that, man? It's good. It's good. It's good. We look, that's good. We look, We look like a That's freshly good. married couple. <laughs> no, you guys, co you coordinating? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like our mothers. Yeah. Our mothers like it's just you brothers. We don't want to separate you. Guys. <laughs> same thing. You're gonna wear the same thing. Yeah. That's what happened. Over so, there. do y'all always dress like this on your shows? I know, man. No, no. It's very dangerous doing that here. It's a, it's a, it's a red flag. It's a red flag. Strange. Don't, strange. don't, don't, don't do that. Like, don't, it's uh, nothing here. So I'm sorry for that. We, we need to no, coordinate. No, it's, yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. It's good. You know what? Coincidence. I'll, yeah. Well, our biggest. Well, 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 yeah. So they're not joking. They're yeah. serious. Yeah. Uh, coincidence. Our biggest fear. That means like, you guys are. You guys almost think the he's same. He's my neighbor. Yeah. Wow, neighbors. That means yeah. you guys think the same. Yeah. yeah. As they say, great minds think alike. So yeah. take it in a positive he's, way. He's a comedian. I'm a comedian. He bold. I'm bold. <laughs> he dresses the same I dress the same He has a baby I stopped <laughs> Oh man No I'm married and everything. You, should, you, should. you don't want to have kids? Uh, I want to have kids May Allah give you Healthy righteous kids Allah mommy, oh, but, man, but not now Like you know <laughs> this, this, this is the This is the new generation Of Saudi Please talk yeah. to him It's the 2030 version Because now they don't Want to have kids They want to yeah. just make money yeah, I want to make but Family is a blessing brother yeah. It is Having kids and you know It's good 
Have some kids. Not, sure? not, it's not going to change you your sure? life. You still be able to get what you want. Say, I, I, I want I want him to say this so my <laughs> wife can see this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like yeah. if you have the righteous kids. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. The and new that, generation think differently. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure your grandfather, how many kids he had? 13. To a life. What about you? Uh, your grandfather? My father, uh, we, we are seven brothers. Mashallah. Seven Allah. See? brothers, one sister. And one Snow White. Mashallah. Yeah. See? That's the, the, the old school Saudis, man. Yes. You got to keep yeah. it that way. They used to have money. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Baraka. It was Baraka. Yeah, it was but, Baraka. But the risk provision and come with the kids. Even Allah says in the Quran, don't think this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes the more kids you have, the more money you might get. Yes, I believe. everybody have their provisions. Baraka. You know baraka. what I mean? Baraka, yes. Yeah, I yeah, believe. That's I believe. why he called me Barakat. A lot oh, so of money. Yeah. brought the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, He's the Barakat. <laughs> so I heard you, uh, you were into the coffee. Thing. I love coffee. coffee. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I'm this kind of person now. I'm a yeah. comedian. <laughs> I, I just do comedy. Uh, no yes, more yes. nine to five. So I have the time <laughs> and the privilege to, yes. to wake up in the morning, choose the beans, yes, you know, grind you the could. beans, you know, spray on them a little bit, you know, <laughs> try to, try to, He's you know. crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have the machine, the, the port filter, whatever. The filter. What's your yeah. favorite coffee, beans? Uh, my favorite, uh, it's Colombian. Colombian. Yeah. You drink I don't coffee? No, nothing about it. You just want to wake up. Gawa Arabia. Yeah, no, uh, uh, no, American. I like American. American. I got Arabia. The Both. American Saudia. is just the type they make the coffee. Yeah. Like they call it Americano, just espresso with water. But you have different coffee beans. I think some of the best in the world is Ethiopian and Colombia. Yes. You know what I mean? Ethiopian. I, I love Ethiopian when it comes to V60. Yeah, yeah because they have so many varieties. They, yeah. The original coffee was founded in Ethiopia. The Yemenis was the first to make a drink out of it. So okay. the Yemenis was the first to sell coffee and ship it across around the world. Mm. You know, so from a port called Mocha. Yeah. Yemen, that's why they used to call coffee mocha back in the... Mocha. They still call some coffee mocha, but they put like chocolate and stuff in it, you know, so... What's your favorite? So, Ethiopian Colombia. Ethiopian yeah. Colombia. Yes. So what, Puerto what Rican kind of coffee type? too? I got to go yeah, you have to, the you motherland. Have, you have to, man. Puerto Rican. <laughs> what, what kind of type? What kind of type? Spread I love so black coffee, bro. Black V60, coffee. like V60, can mix yeah. drip coffee. Yeah, I don't really is, drink nothing else. This is a message for yes. all you people out there <laughs> that been, you know, you, you, you're making coffee a struggle. You know, <laughs> well, when I wake up in the morning, go, go to a to a shop, whatever shop yeah. that is, and when I see this Kuna car, man. <laughs> you know, the little Korean Chinese car. I know there's a woman inside. <laughs> She's going to make my life hard, man. <laughs> she started ordering all that stuff. And coffee is at the end of the very top, of uh, yes. the end of the very uh, end of the cup, you know. <laughs> and everything else is like, they don't drink See, regular milk coffee. anymore. Yeah, now it's, it's, it's the healthy, you know, oat milk and things oh, like have that. You, have yeah, you seen right. a farmer... Milk and oats, or, or <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the new thing now. You know, people are more um, health, well, we could conscious. Yeah, you know what I mean. We see this in America 15, 20 years ago, so I knew it would come to Saudi because Saudi has a big coffee culture. Yeah, so of course it was going to get to that point where they're going to say, "Give me oat milk and camel milk." They was yeah. doing camel milk in Dubai like 10 years ago. <laughs> camel milk. Yeah, you don't want to drink coffee. You don't want to drink that coffee in a, in a public place. Because <laughs> you know you what camel bathroom, milk does yeah. to you. Yeah, so, camel milk is, is hard, man. When it hits your stomach. Yeah, it hits your stomach. I, I used to I enjoy drinking co camel milk. But it definitely would cleanse you out. Yeah, you, you, you gotta, yeah. <laughs> so, so we know your next move is coffee. My first move was coffee. No, next. His. Next, your next move, you will start the coffee business. I had uh, my first move in business was coffee. Ah, okay. We had actually it was right not too far from here. Okay. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, we closed down. We had two locations. We closed down, mm. and I started getting more involved into my restaurant, which is Smoky Bears with my partners. Mm. Shout out to my partners, Saud, yeah. Sunny, Artan, and everybody. Saud. So, yeah. Saud. <laughs> <laughs> So we got more into the food and beverage, you know what I mean? But coffee, I love coffee, so yeah. I'm always being involved with coffee. So you might need chakar. Inshallah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he he have the the espresso machine, all the stuff he have. Yeah, in his house. And, yeah, in yeah. his house. Mashallah. So love, sometimes uh, when I think about coffee, I think about him. <laughs> so I don't go to the coffee shop, I, I call him. Smart friend. Yeah, yeah. you know, the thing about Good. making but coffee. But he tells me, bring 10, 10 reals with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing. It's, it's like a business. <laughs> if you're good at something, never do it for free, right? So I'm good at it. Yeah, if you got the machine, you might yeah. as well have a coffee. I have a shop machine. at his house. 
I love I love coffee. I love yes. the making of coffee. It's so satisfying. Yeah, true, true, true. You know, it makes if true. you have some stressful day or have something yeah, to true. think about. Yeah. All I have to do is just make a cup of coffee. True, true. The it thing, the process yeah, yeah. of of it, making yeah, the true. coffee is and so it makes good. you respect baristas. I, I took a coffee course before, and after I took that course, yeah. it made me have an, a a newfound respect for the baristas who prepare the coffee. Yeah, yeah. because it, it's a lot to go with it. Even if the heat of the waters temperature is too hot, it affects the taste. So the Baristas have a hard job. Most people just go in a coffee shop, order their coffee, and leave, and don't oh, yeah. show no respect to the baristas. Mm. Yeah, but the taste of they mood can also affect your mood, your taste of coffee. Exactly, exactly. So you want to keep the barista happy, smile at them. Hey, how are you doing today? Yeah, the American style. We like talking, you know. So exactly, the, the <laughs> only reason we did this podcast, me and Barakat, is is, yes. is to learn uh, new culture, new stuff, Amazing. new information, new experiences, uh, such yes. as yourself. Yeah. Thanks and for uh, actually. Uh, for you to be in that situation right now, uh, yes. doing this business is right here. So everybody's talking, I'm sorry to say this, everybody's talking BS these days, you know? <laughs> uh, they're saying, yes. uh, oh, oh, I did this business because I did this business because I think like that, because I, yes. because you stupid, you don't have this mentality, I have mm. this mentality, I have that mentality. Yes. I believe in something. Yes. I believe, if you believe that God is guiding you through your journey, Yes. You'll be start doing this and that and those. All what you have to do is just start stop moving. Start course, doing the things. Of course, of course, of course, of course. You know? We, we call it say, yes. you know? Say, yes. uh, true, true. Yeah. I agree I, with you. Yes. Uh, and I want you to, to I want you to uh, uh, agree or disagree on this. Yes. Because do you, do you agree on this point? This is this is what I'm saying. Most I of the people agree, now they don't know? do nothing. First of all, you have to Every good comes from Allah. Yes. So a person can never really say, I did this, I did this. Tawfiq is from God, no matter yes. what. You know what I mean? So any good that we have is from Allah's wisdom, His mercy, His kindness. True. You know True. what I mean? Um, it doesn't matter, you know, some people who doesn't have that much education. True. Like, for example, if you look at the older Arabs, they might not have the education. The Bedouins, True. they didn't have the education that we that we might have now access to, meaning book educations. Mm. You know what I mean? But something that I always say, like the, the, the Bedouin and the people from the ghetto where we come from, we have two things in common. Yeah. Like a Bedouin can walk in the desert and, so, and say that plant right there, if you pull it up, it has water in it. But the same plant, and one of them told me this, the same plant you see in the city, he told me don't, don't drink from it because it's from the sewage, the water from the sewage. They, yeah. they know this from just living that life in the desert, surviving the same way in the hood. We tell you, you turn that corner, mm. you might get robbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we know where to go. So Did these things, yeah. yeah, so this is from Allah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the, 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 you know, people, you know, like if you look at the old kings in Saudi Arabia, yeah. most of, they didn't have secular education. Most of them only had Islamic education, but look, they built the country up with Saudi Arabia. If you look at other countries, Emirates, Khaliji countries that's surrounding them, yeah. they're all doing a great job. But a lot of times they was getting help from the, the British. They was getting help. Saudi Arabia, they wasn't really, if you look at how they built their cities, they didn't really get outside help mm. other than, you know, teaching them how to get the oil out of the ground. Yeah. But to, to implement a city and build a city, it just came from them that never that just had Islamic education that they learned in the desert. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this take is 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 to, from Allah. From you know exactly. what I mean? So, but of course you gotta you gotta know that. If you go into business thinking that, you know, you you know, of course you wanna learn about the business, you wanna yeah. educate yourself on the type of business that you involve it, because the more education you have, it's better to implement it, you know, yeah. and it's, it's better for you. But at the end of the day, it's all from God. It's, it's all yeah. from Allah. True, true. You know? <laughs> true, man. Uh, before, before, I, before I know you right now, it, we used to, to uh, let's say, um, love we, you and we, afraid we, we of know, you. We know you. Uh, <laughs> love you and afraid of you. <laughs> we now we're afraid of you. Yeah, we <laughs> know you 20, 000, 20 years before. Yeah, the, <laughs> and now <laughs> we respect you and afraid of you. Don't be afraid of because, me. Why? Because yeah. I see that boxing thing going yeah, on. Yeah, you know? yeah. All the boxers so, come to... to, to yeah, to don't you. mess around with this man. <laughs> no, yeah. this is, I don't box He's my the, brothers. The, the <laughs> friend of the boxer. <laughs> so every time, every time we see it, like an event going on in yes, Saudi yeah. Arabia, especially for boxing. Yes. Muta is there, man. Yeah, because, you know, shout out to Prince Khalid, Big okay. K, the one he's in charge of the boxing, um, to bring all the boxing in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Um, he the one who brought all the big, he brought all the big fights here. Okay. He's a friend of mine's. He, um, very humble dude, you know what I mean? His love for boxing, um, he trying to take it to another level. So okay. usually when these events come, he'll call me and say, this person is coming and I try to go and show up and, you know, show some support, especially if they foreigners like Americans, 
I want them to see that there's another American like them that's already living here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if they need anything, I tell them if you need anything in Saudi Arabia, just mm-hmm. hit me up. You know what I mean? Oh, so, oh, okay. Alhamdulillah. So and that, that's the beautiful thing now is that people are coming to Saudi Arabia. When yeah. I moved to Saudi Arabia in 2010, I remember when I was telling people I'm going to move to Saudi Arabia, they thought I was crazy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, what, what, why do you want to go to Saudi Arabia? In 2002, I became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And I remember I used to wear the thobes. And people thought I was nuts. They was like, yeah. man, this guy, <laughs> this guy really went crazy. Mm. Now and all the rappers go to Dubai, they put on the thobe, they take the selfies. <laughs> you know what I mean? They yeah, get on the camel. Yeah, yeah. True, you know? true. So yeah. now I'm happy to see that people starting to find out that Saudi Arabia is a safe country. Mm. You know, before they was afraid to come, like out of their yeah. ignorance, because you got to really understand Saudi for the longest, they didn't really have any media to show the outside world what is Saudi Arabia. True. So now people are starting to see, they can just hashtag Saudi Arabia and say, what's going on in that country? You know what I mean? So now yeah. the negative media is not going to have an impact yeah. if you can go search on yourself. You know what I mean? So, so now people are coming here. Alhamdulillah. So you have people there you love. Tell them to come here. I want to. We tell them all the time, come. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> see, now it's easier. You get this visa. You get this visa. You know what I mean? In three minutes. You know, I met this dude. Actually, when I had a coffee shop, I was surprised. He looked like a hippie. Okay. You know what a hippie is? Yeah, yeah. Like he's like a straight up hippie with long hair, like like no maintenance at all. Yeah, like you he but I respect him because you know, he Googled Saudi Arabia, got on a plane, don't know nobody in this country. Yeah. Got on a plane, he's like a a, a backpacker. Yeah. He just yeah. travel around the world. Came to Saudi Arabia, then he he came to my coffee shop. And I was like, What brought you to Saudi Arabia? He said, Man, I love traveling. And when I realized that I can get the visa, I just got on the plane, I didn't know nobody, and I came to the country. And I said, now how, be honest, tell me how the people treat you. Mm. He said, I, he said, everywhere I go, the people know I'm not from here. Yeah. They welcome me, come to my house, mm. come eat with me, come drink with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. I hope this is what the Saudis don't lose, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. But people, <laughs> people get, a, get surprised uh, if you try to do, you know, throw our culture. Yes, you know, yes, yes. you know. One time I was in the airplane. I was doing stand-up comedy tour in the in the states. Yes. So I start to I saw two old couples in the airplane. Yes. They're struggling with the with Bags. the with the luggage. Yes. So I took the luggage, opened the 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 you know the the, the trunk, put it in, closed it, and then they were like, "Thank you so yeah, much." Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like amazing. This, this is the this normal is thing. Normal, yeah. True, this is true, the normal true. thing. You, you yeah, have true, you, true. people. People need food. You buy some food. Give it to them if they so, need. So, so. This is the normal That's thing. That's normal, but around the world is not normal. It's not normal. You know what I mean? So and when and I'm so afraid that. nowadays. Uh, uh, the the uh, unconscious uh, mm. people reach a level of mm. no conscious that is yeah, so because terrifying. Because if you see somebody phones. dying in front of you. They yeah, be yeah, like yeah. looking, nah, I ain't no, no, got no, nothing to do. No, no, they do this first. Oh, yeah, that's oh, they, for the first thing they want to do is start recording. <laughs> the, then they put the phone down. Then do you need help? Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. <laughs> the, the, the main reason for that is the phone. Yeah, yeah. true, true. For but the here, views. if an accident happened. So. They might kill you for that attention, you know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of people come to you, choke you, no yeah. air. Oh, what's going? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. So, so they, no, they still they start have separate because the culture here that you find in Muslim lands, yeah, Saudi Arabia, Asia, Africa. I travel to this, and this is a common thing you find in Muslim land, just yeah. because it's been passed down for generation after generation. Yeah, you know what I mean. Where mm. people don't really understand it, you know, like the yeah. hospitality, the generosity, mm. the things like that is like. You know, I've been living here for 13 years and stuff yeah. happened. I'm still in awe, like shocked. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe this happened. Like, what? Yeah, like, sometimes sometimes you know I, mean? I wish something happened to me. Like, you know, yeah. you know, see, <laughs> see these marriages, you know, uh, you're, you're my friend and I'm your friend. And for our friendship, this is a Range Rover and 500,000. <laughs> Be my friend, homie. <laughs> Give me my money. Uh, I, I, I'm his friend. <laughs> He's your friend. Huh? Yeah, you we both, for we both broke. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. who's your favorite uh, comedian? Uh, let say, I don't know about Barakat, but me, uh, growing up, <clears throat> uh, and this is, uh, I'm a lucky person. I, I met my <laughs> heroes, you know, in life. Uh, yes. One of them, Pac, uh, life was not uh, good to, to, to make me meet with him, but yes. at least I touched I touched yes. the man that you know, was, his, was his friends before, you know, and, and, and yes. you were the same. Uh, the, uh, the whole outlaws like, for me was like, Alhamdulillah. You know, I met Chappelle. I love Dave, Dave Chappelle. Chappelle. I met him in Dubai. 
Yes, uh, he's a genius. I love everybody <coughs> that went on the Def Comedy Jam. Uh, the old school people. The, the old, old school, school people, yeah, especially. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. watched it when we were young. Yeah, even wow. Hamburger. You know, remember Hamburger? Yeah, Hamburger. He even Hamburger. Away, I believe. Yeah, I believe. Hamburger. Hamburger. Every yeah, punchline Hamburger. was like Hamburger. Bernie I, I, yeah, I yeah. met that guy. Bernie Mac. Bernie, Bernie Mac. Mac. Yeah, these legends. We yeah. call him in Saudi Arabia the Macawi. Be- because he's like, he's like Mecca people, you know, yeah, the yeah, anger and the like, aggressiveness. Yeah. <laughs> they say, what are you saying? Yeah. The same, same aggressiveness, yeah, you know. Yeah, scared of yeah. you. Yeah. Scared. Yeah. <laughs> and I like Mike Epps, uh, Mike the, Epps. from the he's movie a good Friday. Friend of ours, Mike Epps. That's what I well, that's what I understood. Good dude, good dude. Yes, he's, yes. he's funny. He kills yeah. me every time. He he Definitely. managed to kills me. Every time yeah, in every movie, funny, he's special, you know, especially yeah. the, God forgive me, the, this one might take me to hell. Stuck for but the, this one that, that when he makes like, you know, baby, you know, <laughs> the one with the, with the guy with the broken arm. To a special school. Yeah, What's special like, about the special school? <laughs> you know, it's like, baby. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I wish you would have recorded that. I, I would have sent yeah. it to my guy. This t- one, send this, to him. this one kills me all the time. It's like, I don't want to laugh at this. Yeah, yeah, but he's this guy, funny. Yeah, 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 funny. Yeah. Stop so, laughing. You're going to hell with me. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is hilarious. Yeah, he's a li- Dave, Dave Chappelle. Do you know he's Muslim? I know. Yeah, I, I, I was. I spoke to him back in Dubai. Uh, yeah. We were we were in the green room, and I said, uh, Dave Chappelle, wow. I'm a big big fan of yours. I love your comedy. You're yes. inspirational. I know your whole journey, the fifty million dollar deal or whatever happened to yeah, you. He walked away from. Yeah, 50 I respect million. that. And he was like, but let me ask you this question out of out of off record. Where were you? Let me tell you something. Back in the days when they all thought I flew to Africa, I was actually in Mecca. Yeah. Performing yeah. Umrah. <laughs> wow, you went to Mecca. He said. Yeah, I, I was in Mecca. I, I've That's been in well. Africa just for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. You <laughs> went to Mecca. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, this guy, I, I he just... He's a shitter, you know. Yeah, his yeah, voice, yeah, yeah, yeah. his yeah. looks. He's, but he's a genius timing. because all his jo- uh, all his uh, jokes uh, has told a everybody. Right now. He told everybody live. Yeah, yeah, now, <laughs> now I don't told tell everybody. Don't tell him your secret. <laughs> he's so friendly. Yeah, he's, he's very he's nice. So natural. His mother was a, you know, his mother. Um, I think she might still be alive. His mother became Muslim. His sisters became Muslim. His story, Allah, like the Allah. family Allah. story, is amazing. Amazing. This yeah. guy amazing, is amazing, man. and 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 he's he's standing by his. Standing by his yes, rights, he's standing yeah, by his, 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 his so human. He's not moved by money. Which he's is, not moved by money. That's real, very rare in Hollywood because yeah. people would sell their own mother for the money in Hollywood. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was happy to him. Yes. And I, I'm not happy for him especially. I was happy for justice. Yes, true, He stood true, up true. one day, it was like, people, yes. if you love me, don't watch my stuff. Don't watch it. Yeah, true. Don't go watch so He wasn't it. getting up from it. And, yeah. and Comedy yeah, Central came back. We're sorry. Here you go. All the money he yeah, ran true, away true, from, true. Yeah. you know. He got it later. He got <laughs> it later. And, and, and I was like, yes. oh my God, this is a victory for, for, for not comedy. Yeah. This is a victory for humanity right here. <laughs> this was going on right he here. believed in something that stood true, true, Yes. True. And, and that's what yeah. I love about Dave. It's not the comedy and the material, yes. but his life journey. Through, yeah, true, true. And what he stand life. for, what he believe in, yeah. you know what I mean? That's some. That's Shout out to Dave Chappelle. Yeah, shout out, shout out, <laughs> shout out to my man. He's my main man, actually. He's my main I, man. I, I'm, I'm so influenced by by his comedy. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, he's easy. Mm. You know, that's why he's funny. He's easy. Yeah, easy going. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And all his, and to be honest, all his um, stand ups, it, it has a message behind it. Here you go. Yeah. Like when you watch it at the end, he, he educate the people, but he use comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Very funny guy. And Very and funny guy. I, I'm sorry to ask you this. Yes, but me and my friend, yeah, we, we, you know, we, we talk behind your back. Uh, good, yeah, I, get, I, need, <laughs> I need good deeds on your mukayama. I need it. some good deeds on your mukayama in, in a good way, you know. Oh, no, yeah. forgive, forgive. Because, nah, because, because, because we're not rude. Okay, good. We're not rude. We yeah. said, should we we're, ask him? We wear white for that, for yeah. forgiveness, for peace, <laughs> world peace. Yeah, you know, in white, we will let you forget everything. Would Muta would Muta be uncomfortable asking him about the? The hip hop industry or the music industry. No, no, no. Ask me whatever you comfortable with. Because you know, you know I mean? we, we we know these boundaries. When you yeah, yeah. No, when you leave, okay. yeah. when you, you leave the okay. world behind, uh, I don't know. Uh, but no, what? you can ask me. If, if yeah, feel free. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my question is, uh, do you understand? Do you understand what's going on in the hip hop industry in Saudi Arabia? Do you do you realize this happens? I don't really know. You know, I, yeah. I I don't really know too much about the hip hop scene in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Because I don't listen to music or rap anymore. Uh, I stayed stop. away from it. Yeah. yeah. Other than, um, I think the only person I know of is a Saudi rapper is Kosei. Yeah. 
I don't know if he still rap. He's a friend of mine, but yeah. I don't know if he still rap. But he was the one person I met because I met him before I moved to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I met him like 15 years ago in Jeddah. Yeah, yeah. So I know about Kosei. You know what I mean? Yeah. I met one guy named Skinny. I think he's a rapper. Skinny. Yeah. Saudi Maybe online. Rapper. I met him. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I hope, my opinion, I don't want the Saudis to go that route. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand you know that. I mean? And here's what I, here's my point exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See. The, the 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 main course or the main thing that made gangster rap gangster rap yes is the life behind it True. is the the nature behind it True. You can't be no gangster <laughs> if your mama give you salary every month. Yeah. You know? <laughs> if you live, if you live in a villa, you can't be a gangster. You got a maid. You can't be no gangster. That's what I'm trying you to got say. Got a maid, homie. homie. Yeah. Nowadays, rappers uh, here, true, local true. rappers, if they have problems with each other, they go yeah. to the, they take it to the studio. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't go. They don't go fight each other. They're, no, no. They they. Get, uh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. We don't want them to do this. We don't want them to yeah. fight. Yeah, I, I hope the Saudis don't find it. Yeah. The reason why, because I come from the hip hop world. Yeah, you know what I mean. And and um, let's leave religion aside. You know what I mean. Let's say we don't want to go into. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, we would say leave religion aside for now. Let's take it from just the morals of this industry. Yes, you know what yeah. I mean. It's a very corrupt business, very corrupt industry. Yeah, it is, and and pretty much it calls to corruption. You know what I mean. So the rap music and the hip hop music, especially nowadays in America. And and it's and if the Saudis are following this, then this is not good. Yeah. Because nowadays rap culture in America's gun culture yeah. is leading to a lot of the I believe a lot of the killings that's happening in the black community, mm -hmm. the Latin community is because of rap music now. Because yeah. all the rappers are promoting this in their music. You know what I mean? So True. what does that have to do with Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia have their own history, their own culture for mm. thousands of years. Islamic is the, is the truth. Like Umar bin Khattab, he said something very wise. Mm. He said, before Islam, we were, we was nothing pretty much. Yeah. He said, then Allah honored us with Islam. He said, so when it, any of us go back to try to find honor other than Islam, yeah. Allah will humiliate us. True. Mm. So I love my Saudi brothers, but when you try to rap and, and act like a gangster, you actually humiliating yourself. You're but, losing your identity. But you lose some, your identity. Some of the guys that... They are not trying to be anyone. Uh, they have their own thoughts. They talk with our morals. Uh, I've seen some good... Yeah, but you're more like you have poetry. Yeah. yeah. Stick to like, you know what I mean? Things that raised the people in Saudi Arabia was Islam. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Hip hop for us, it helped us in some ways. I can't lie. You know what I mean? I can't say... You know, it, it was all bad because it helped. It helped me mm. get out of the ghetto. It helped me feed my family. Mm. It helped me in some ways. Of course, we we can say that. But nowadays, you know what I mean? It's promoting violence. Yeah. So even if a Saudi have his own style or whatever, he probably ain't gonna go that far. He gonna yeah. eventually have to say, okay, I have to go to mainstream hip hop. I have to start doing what these mainstream rappers True. doing in order for me to sell records. Yeah. Then you're going to start seeing them with the tattoos and then you're going to start seeing them. I seen something like this. You know what I mean? Mm. So this is not the culture for, you know, I, I wouldn't even want my own kids to do this. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, we have I this... have a 24-year-old son, by the way. Okay. And he, he lives in LA. He wants to be a rapper. Mm. But he's 24 years old. So when he come to me and say, Daddy, you know, can you help me get into music? I said, I can't help you. I said, I can advise you. You're going to make your own decision because mm. you're 24 years old. He's my oldest son, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he's lived in America his whole life. Mm. And I explained to him what the music industry is. I told him, look, you be careful, stay away from it. But if that's your choice, that's your choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. But I don't want that for him. And that's, you know? and that's yeah. when, we, when we were little kids and teenage life or whatever, we, we used to see, to see the shining part of, of this industry. Yes. Yeah. yes music, yes. Uh, movies, uh, yes, comedy, yes. whatever it is. Yes. But once you go into the depth of it, true, nothing has nothing is for free. You cannot true, make true, it by true. yourself. If there's a cause behind it true. and there's some agenda behind true, it, true, true, especially true. nowadays, true. every movie I see or every music I listen to, yes, my 35 years old mind mm. is 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 opening that scanner, hunting for the subliminal yeah. messages inside. True, that. true, true. And, and yeah, truly, so. that the kids have no idea what's going on. Yeah, they probably don't really understand. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, they, I yes. have a question. Uh, yes. So, uh, w when you were young and, and, and outlaws, yes, did, did you realize that your effect was worldwide, not only America, or or you? We, we didn't. didn't we, know. we well, we would know that we sold records. We didn't have social media back then. You know yeah. what I mean? We knew that our records were selling in Africa and Asia. Um, 
we, because we see the record sales, but we didn't really know the impact. Yeah. We focus on America. We thought that, you know what I mean, um, America's the biggest market for us. We didn't really realize that the reach, until like, we went on a tour. I remember I went to like Germany. We had a tour throughout Europe and I was surprised when I seen like people in the audience and they just, they don't even speak English, but they rapping every single mm. word and mm. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow, they got the tattoos. I'm like, man, you know what I mean? Then we realized yeah. it went worldwide. Shakir, <laughs> we're in Mecca, listening. Shakir, we're in Mecca, brother. Well, 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 brother, <laughs> brother let, me, let me tell you something. Yeah. There's one place in Mecca, and I'm not, when I say Mecca, Mecca is a big city. Yes. It's not originally not next haram. to the Haram. Yeah, haram know, is know, very far away yeah. from big, sir. But we... And Mecca, Mecca guys were like gangsters, you know. They love to be gay, you know. The 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 so buggy, the buggy, baggy uh, pants, and stuff, the baggy yeah. pants, the fubu t-shirts, you know. In Mecca, the, in Mecca, in yeah. Mecca yeah. Wow. You know this, the 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 hats and the and and, yeah. the, and the what what do you call this one? The the bandanas, the bandanas, yes. Yeah. yes. Even even the, the bling bling, the bling bling. <laughs> the yeah, bling, we bling. have this dragon. At least the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> the, at least the dragon. The, the usher music going on. The sound system in the cars. You know, in Mecca. the break dance. All and, y'all should have went to jail. Yeah, yeah. we don't the, want this in Mecca. The, the break dance. All y'all should have went to jail. I used to have hair. Huh? I used to have hair braids. Yeah, I have the braids and everything. That's what made it disappear. <laughs> but anyways, you know, yes, we yes. just used to, you know, blast the music. Wow. We go break dance and whatever until the popo comes. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah, popo. Yeah, Get y'all in Mecca. Yeah. Don't bring this to Mecca. Yeah, yeah. Don't bring this here. So. Don't bring this here. We didn't know what's going on. But because y'all was kids. You know what I mean? We were like kids. They didn't and young kids. understand the lyrics. Yeah, yeah true, true, just, true. But it, we wow. felt the mainly masculine energy I, behind I, I, it. I think this is probably why a lot of... Because I realized one thing. Like a lot of the Saudi kids or Arab kids in general, yeah. they looked up not even look up, I won't even say that, but they they understand or they lean close to a hip-hop music. Yeah. Or hip-hop culture. Yeah. West Coast can't culture. And I always wonder why, you know what I mean? And maybe it's the whole masculine thing behind it. Yes. Because in rap, you got to be macho. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Arab culture, the same thing. You know what I mean? You got to mm -hmm. be, it's just a macho culture. And I think this was probably what, you know, dragged the people yeah. in different countries to want to listen to rap. Mm. Yeah, you I stopped. I, mean? I stopped. I stopped listening to to hip hop music in nineteen ninety six. Alhamdulillah. You know, I stopped yeah, because good. wow. Because come on, if I, yes, I'm sorry I, to say this, if I, I want to take the noob, I wanted something worth it. You know, yes, <laughs> because, right, right. <laughs> you know this is not True. worth it. The it's new, it's the, it's the, it's the it's new hip hop man. man. <laughs> Yeah, it's smart not, man. Well, I, I mean, the new the new generation is like they, they listen to this music, me 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 Mickey Mouse, <laughs> Mickey Mouse. That's that's all I hear. It's all about business. Now. Yeah, the new generation, even now the way they dress, the way they are, like even the yeah, hip hop is is the masculinity is not there anymore. It's not there. I think it, in the nineties, yeah. not to not to say it because I was involved, but we had a different mindset. You know, nowadays the guys can have all types of pink hair color. Yeah. color. You come in the studio with pink hair when I was a rapper, <laughs> we shaving your hair. We was like the religious police. Remember the religious police? You try yeah. to go to the mall with that back in the day, you yeah. get your hair shaved. Shave we it. was that. You come to the, we Shave. was doing that yeah, to people. True, you ain't true. coming around us looking like that. Yeah. You know, but nowadays it's part of the code. It's weird. So you nowadays you, I, I, it took me a long time because even on the internet, I was on the Instagram and I think I was joking with my friend and I, I called him ugly. Cause we grow, we call each other that, like, oh, yeah. shut up, you ugly man, and and then all of a sudden Instagram is gonna block me, like, I yeah, said, yeah. I said, people I'm are just so joking with my friend, like, <laughs> yeah. he's not even ugly. We just having fun, like, no. but they was like, you bullying, online bully. I said, these yeah. kids are weak. They are. The yeah, new generation yeah. is weak, bro. You can't even have fun with them anymore. When you was to be young, we we will sit in the streets and we will call each other's. Yeah, like you. This is how yeah. we do. Like you, Every you say the words word. to hurt each other, but yeah. you're friends. We're then friends. we laugh. We're, we're Nowadays, if you here. do that to the new generation, they <laughs> yeah. they get depressed. I don't want to live anymore. I remember I was a kid. I said that to my grandfather. I think I wanted to. So I said I want to die. I don't want to live anymore. You know what he did? He said, "You want to die? Okay, come." He went, put a hanger, got a rope. He said, hang yourself. <laughs> after that, I never said it again. <laughs> life, life is beautiful, right? Yeah, now. after that, I said, yeah. Grandpa put me to the test. Yeah. The new generation, they cry, they take their phone, they say, I want I don't want to live anymore. Yeah, like, they, I don't like, know what's I'm, happening, I'm, bro. I'm, de I'm depressed, man. Yeah. It's like the cool thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm true, depressed, true. and all the girls were caught up on him because he's depressed. And maybe and, he depressed, yeah. but when yeah. we grew up, 
if you say you're depressed, like they was beat it out of us. Depressed. Yeah. Like I seen a meme. <laughs> and it was like, it was a guy, he was, he was like, I'm depressed. Yeah. And his mother was a black guy in America. His mother said, Depress these dishes. You better go clean. <laughs> you better clean. That's how I was raised. You can't say you depress it. Depress yeah. these dishes. You better go depress yeah. these dishes. Yeah. And, he had, and he was cleaning the dishes. <laughs> yeah. the one, one Puerto Rican comedian. One Puerto Rican comedian. He's yes. in America right now. And yes. uh, his mother used to, to be like uh, you know, oppressed yes. in, the, in their country. You know, yeah. it's, it's dictatorship. No yeah. freedom, nothing. Okay. Not Puerto Rico. Maybe uh, a different. Maybe, Puerto Rico is America. Maybe Colombia. Maybe Colombia. Maybe yeah. another Latin country. Yeah. Yes. Maybe Colombia. Yes. Ca Castro. Where's from? Castro is from Cuba. 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 Yeah. Yes. They yes. were in Cuba. My grandfather's from Cuba. Yeah. So, so be that, careful what you say. I'm sorry. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. This, <laughs> this man caught yeah, me off yeah. guard. He was like, <laughs> "My mom, I'm, 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 I'm wow. so sorry. Uh, the, they took the school. They did this to me in school. They, oh, what else they do? Did they take your freedom?" <laughs> no, they she, his mother she's reminding him, him yeah, like, that she's wow. the reason he's here right now yeah. and all of his problems is nothing, <laughs> nothing compared to what, compared with to what happened yeah, to true, them. true and, and uh, <laughs> this, is, this is the beautiful thing I, I see I come because I didn't have the chance to be a rapper of course Alhamdulillah. so I, I got, I've gone to the nearest thing which is delivering <laughs> punchlines as a comedian yeah. so it, you deliver punchlines yeah, either, true, either, true, yeah. either a rapper or, or a no, stand-up comedy, comedian yeah. and, and all of them need street smart yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. have a yeah, it's true, true. You gotta, you gotta have, have this Gotta have it, then you yeah. yeah, true. So if you don't mind, yes. What is it what is it like to be with Pac in the studio recording something new? Pac when he came to record, he was a very hard worker. Like he took his he took recording seriously. It was no playing in the studio. Okay. It wasn't like even though we was young kids, 14, 15, 16 years old, we when it when it came to work. He didn't allow no interference, no playing. Like Pac would record three, four songs a day. Oh. Literally. And and the way he would record, like he would put the beat up, for example. He would write his rap and he would tell us, y'all better hurry up. Whoever's not finished before I finish, you can't get on the song. So if you wow. can't get on the song, that means you don't get money. Pressure. Well, that's, that's, pressure, that's the man. pressure. Yeah. Like, so we was have to like keep up, yeah. you know, that's why... Some of the outlaws were on some songs. Some of us is not on this song because he was like he didn't like to take too much time on one song. Oh, you know what I mean. And um, and I used to think that was normal until after he passed away, and you start seeing other rappers like Snoop Dogg and other people in the studio, mm. and it probably take three days to finish the song. Yeah. When I used to see that, I used to be surprised. Like, why do they take this long to finish the song? That was normal for them. Yeah. Pop was just like in one hour, one song, the next song, put up the beat. Hard worker. Hard worker. He did, he, and outside the studio, he wasn't the type of person that was always into nightclubs. He always wanted to stay home. You know, he was really into, like, family. He'd bring his mother. Yeah. He's very close to his mother. So he would always fly his mother to L.A. He only wanted to cook. He only wanted to eat fried chicken and orange soda. I'm not exaggerating. Okay. This is all he eat. Fried chicken, orange soda. No health. No health. <laughs> wow. Although he looked, his physique yeah, was he like... Was physique, he was ripped. Exercise and stuff. He's ripped. Yeah, he was ripped, but that was his meal. So he was a very, like, serious person. And yeah. and, and the thing is, uh, okay, so... Uh, uh, that's why I'm, I'm telling you this. When you... No social media, nothing, okay? Yes. And we used to hear his music... After he passed away, we thought he was still alive true, because true, his music true. still pumping, you know? Yeah. Two yeah, albums, true. two albums, Even two now, albums. Like, the Even conspiracy now. theory that people still think he's alive. I, yeah. I thought that. <laughs> I, thought, I, I saw yeah. all the documentaries with this guy right here. <laughs> yeah. well, when you walk in, in, in LA streets, you will hear Tuvac singing. Yeah, they love him in LA. Anyway, yeah. Till now. Yeah. Because of his hard work, because if you're doing three songs a day, that's why they was able to, after he died, they was able to put music out. Even now, and it's still music that they haven't released. They yeah. still have unreleased songs of him because he, when he got out of prison and went to death row, he just wouldn't stop working. Like, oh. Every day, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's he just had a hard work ethic. I never seen a rapper before him or after him that worked like that. And I, I love I love the way he, he handled uh, his music, his art. And and I love the humane part out of out, out of Tupac. Yes. And uh, and also the the music had messages in it. You know? True. Although true, we, you know it's ups and downs in the music. Yeah, but our music know? in the '90s we had a message. Like if we there's take, a message, if you take it. away the musical instruments, for example, and just read the lyrics, we always try to put a message. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? We always because we was we felt like we was the voice of the ghetto. We want to tell yeah. the world what we going through. You know what I mean? And, it, you know, the way hip-hop started off, it started off in the Bronx. 
you know what I mean, of of, of rappers just, you know, but actually it really, a lot of people, it's a controversial thing because mm. a lot of people don't want to admit this, but the Puerto Ricans had a lot to do with the founding of hip hop. Yeah. It was blacks and Puerto Ricans. Majority of the blacks in America started it, but Puerto Rico came because hip hop started with break dancing. Sorry about that, DJing. Okay. Yeah. So this element came with the Puerto Ricans. They 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 pushed it. So it was black Puerto Ricans at the beginning. Even though now it's very controversial, they arguing over this stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. The blacks like no, it's one hundred percent us. Puerto Ricans, you five percent. But, <laughs> <laughs> but because they don't want to, you know, the blacks in America don't want to feel like to them this is the one thing that they gave. Yeah, to the world, like they feel it. Whether people agree with it or not, this is the one thing that the blacks from the middle of the ghetto who had everything against them. Yeah, remember back in the day, it's not like if you know the history of blacks in America, it's not like they gave us anything free. No, you know what I mean. We had everything against us, so for them, for us to come up with this talent of rapping mm. and coming up with our own genre of music, that's why they feel like no, you got to give us our props yeah. because the most important thing outside of America is hip hop music. People don't know that. It's, it's really it's hip hop music. So it was, it, and it started from the ghetto. Yeah. It started from the Bronx. It started from people saying, you know, saying our culture, what we was going through. And then when it went to West Coast, that's when the gangster element came involved in it. Even yeah. for us in New Jersey, when we first heard of an NWA and Ice T, we yeah. like, wow, that's what happened in LA. So they had Bloods and Crips. Like, they really, is that dangerous out there? Yeah. They really killing each other? But when gangster rap came, believe it or not, now rappers started selling millions of records because the number one consumer of rap music in America, even to this day, is white people. This is true. Yeah, yeah. White sub white kids that grew up in the suburbs was fascinated of the culture of black American. Yeah. Even to this day, I was I was watching a post. It was a rapper named King Von or whatever. Yeah. I, 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 he died or whatever. And it's a post of this, like you he this one black dude from Chicago is charging white people. $200 to go to this mural painted in the middle of the ghetto because they fascinated with our culture. Yeah. There was a it, it, there was a tour bus that used to take people to Compton. You could people from China and all over the world would fly to America and pay $500 just mm. to go to Compton and look at the ghetto. Like yeah, yeah. they was fascinated. So what the blacks did and, and and also later on the Latino people came, they was we was able to put what we really went through in our neighborhoods and we was able to put it on the and on the on the music and the world was able to like for the first time, say, this is how people really live it. Mm. In America, like, what? Mm -hmm. now, how is these people surviving this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's abnormal. When yeah. I was 13, 14 years old, I seen people get killed. That's not a normal thing for them. Yeah. Like, now my kids growing up in Saudi Arabia, the only thing I'm worrying about when they leave the house is, man, pay attention to these cars. When they uh, go to drop drop mm. the garbage off, I'm like, man, you better be, because these cars, God, they drive yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. This guy I be tripping. 14 years old, I leave my house. And I literally go in the corner. I try to sell drugs, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Yeah. Try to sell drugs. I seen somebody get shot. I, you know, it's times that I'm 15 years old and people getting shot around me, bullets going past my head. Mm -hmm. And then I would go in my house and I write a song about it. Like, yeah. man. What, so we was really putting what, our lifestyle, really putting it into the music. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was one of them things that the rest of the world became fascinated over. You know what I mean? I mean, the, you guys, I mean, see, when something is so awesome, People fight it, resist it. Yes, in yes. the beginning, you know. Yes, y y the black culture is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. White yeah. people started. No, don't do that. No, don't do that. Yes. Go shorty. They started. <laughs> they started copying. You know, and not, and not just white people. You got to like my grandmother. Yeah. I remember when I came home and told her I want to be a rapper, she thought I was, like, the older blacks, too, thought that was odd. Like, I'm yeah. sure like you, like, a, a Saudi, when you probably told your mother or parents that you want to be a comedian, yeah. I'm sure they probably was like, a comedian, Saudi? Yeah. Like, it was new. They, they have a, they have this clown image in their head. Yeah, they, they probably they like, like <laughs> you want to be a clown? That's it. <laughs> you want to uh, yes. the, the, the beep beep? Yeah, and so they're not going to get it. So they yeah. probably look at you like, do rookie on him. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so even my grandmother, and I remember I used to come home and I used to say, I want to be a rapper. And she like, rapper? You know, she thought it was weird. Like, what type of shit it is and that? Yeah. And these rappers and these losers. Like, she thought they was loser people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So eventually people, even when rap started, they mm. said this would last for five years. Now they just went 50 years, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, you know? So even if I don't agree with it now, I don't listen yeah. to it. But I don't when we started off, we didn't think it was gonna go this far. Yeah, I, I remember I mean? one movie. I don't I, I don't remember the movie, but he got he caught me off guard. They have a funny, funny punchline. This guy was listening to a old old black dude listening yeah. to uh to rap music. First time in his life. Sounds like an auction. 
<laughs> because you know, in, fact, in the South, it was like, now wait a minute, five, seven, eight, nine, 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 seven, eight, nine, six, six, seven, eight. You know, he thought it was an auction, but yeah. the older black generation, they yeah. didn't, they wasn't with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand because, because they look at it like you, like my grandparents' mm-hmm. age. I was raised with my grandmother and grandfather. I was, I was raised by them. Okay, so they come from the South. My grandmother's from West Virginia. Yeah, you know, my family go back three hundred plus years in America. Mm. You know what I mean? Before it was really a USA, my family roots go back to the South. My great-great-grandfather was a Native American, oh. which is the original people of America. From my father's side and also on my mother's side, my mother's family was Taino, which are the, mm. these are the Natives that Christopher Columbus encountered first, the Taino oh. people. So he killed them first. He killed these people first. And then he went to mainland America and started oppressing the Cherokees and stuff like that. So these are my ancestors to go back to the Native Americans, you know? Okay. So if you know the history of blacks and what they went through, to, for your grandparents to hear you say, I'm going to be a rapper, they you literally a loser to them. Yeah. Like a rapper. Like, we did like we did all that for you yeah, to do this? Yeah, yeah, we went through all yeah. of that for you to just mumble and rumble. That's what they said. This mumble <laughs> stuff you talking about and yeah. this rap attack, like my grandmother used to clown me. Like, I yeah. don't know what this stuff is. Mm-hmm. Until the first time, I think it was an interview. Tupac had an interview on BT because I used to go to New York. I used to say, Grandma, I'm going to New York to meet this rapper named Tupac, this and this. And, and she's like, Tupac or Tupac? Babe? What is this? Like, oh, hell, like they didn't understand. My yeah. grandmother was a hardcore Southern church woman. Oh. Like the old ladies that always got a Bible, you know, like you mm. say in the movies, the old yeah. black ladies always got a Bible, always saying, Lord, please, and Lord, this. Like, that's how my grandmother really was, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So one time it was an interview that they did on Tupac on BT. Okay. And I sat down with her. I was like, look, grandma, this is the dude that I be going to, to go visit all the time. Listen to him. And when she heard him speak, she, he was, she was like, yeah, he sound like he got some common sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he sound like an intelligent person. Yeah. So then my grandmother started feeling more like, okay, now I see that you going with a good person. He sound like he got a good you know, head on his shoulder. Yeah. Because on that interview, he was talking about a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm. Um. So then she started feeling a little more comfortable about it. Mm. But at first they was like, man, they ain't understand. <laughs> they don't, they don't. But, and this is the generational trauma that's happening. At every yeah, yeah, generation yeah, yeah. True. look down on the other. Yeah, true. And, and I, I try to break the cycle. I was like, if, yeah. if this new generation, uh, sometimes we said, you know, all these like us, yeah. said, look, this new generation, they do that TikTok dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, that, stop, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. Now we're in that. <laughs> look, we were, we were having, yeah. in, in, when we were youngsters, yeah. we were having fun of the old guys. Yeah, the old, blood, we the old like, guys, though. Now we're old. We have to respect the new generation. <laughs> and They're stop smarter. wearing like this. And stop wearing yeah, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the uniforms, you know? <laughs> you know, the new generation, they're smarter. You cannot fool them yeah, right yeah, now. You yeah. cannot go like, if you don't go to sleep. I don't know about that. I yeah. don't know if they're smarter. Now, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this new generation scares you, me, brother. You, you can't <laughs> fool them, man. They go to Google. They Google everything. You can, yeah, true. Everything is... They They might be a little more... Because of the social media, they know a lot a lot yeah, of stuff. They're they're a smarter. Lot. They, they, they come with some stuff. But some... Listen, we let's keep it 100. They smart in some ways, and actually some ways, they slow. They are. Like, we... Because we... Like, certain stuff, we know how to do hands-on. Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't have to go Google how to cook mm-hmm. an egg sandwich. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they have to Google how to cook an egg sandwich, and some of them don't mm-hmm. even know that you got to turn the oven on first. It's not that... Mm-hmm. It's, it's not tasty. Gen- <laughs> it's not even <laughs> tasty, man. <laughs> the new generation is spoiled, I think. Mm-hmm. They got it so easy... Mm-hmm. That I believe is uh, is is dumbing them down, and the mm. reason why I say that because they can't even go from here to um, to custody without Google Map. I remember yeah. back in the day when we wanted to go somewhere, we used to have to say, "Tell me how to get to your house." Mm. Okay, you drive for ten minutes, you get off on this exit, you get off on the left. We had to use our we we use our brains more, bro. Yeah, back in the day, you know what I mean. Yeah. Here you go, want some water, man? Uh, I have some water there, man. Okay, I, I, I wanted to <laughs> see, uh, something that I see. Uh, when when someone come to Islam yes. and change his religion, uh, I feel so happy uh, as a Muslim. And sometimes I even watch on YouTube people people taking shahada and and someone is convincing them to go to Islam. So uh, uh, about your story, I know you said it yes uh, before, but we, we want to Inshallah. hear the virgin from you, <laughs> if you yes. don't mind. Yeah, I, uh, most people don't know I was actually born Muslim. Yeah, My mother and father was Muslim. They converted to Islam before I was actually born. Mm. So Muta is the name that my mother gave me. Oh, okay. My father, name, they gave yeah. me this name. Yeah. So, But when I was three, my mother and father was murdered in front of me. Oh. Yeah. And the people that killed them was 
affiliated with the Nation of Islam. You know the Nation of Islam? Yeah. Yeah. Nation of Islam is a group in America that, that Malcolm X was part of at yeah. the beginning. Mm. They believe that every white person is a devil. They believe Allah is a black man, Audhu Billah, and they hate other races. So it's like a racist cult. So the people that killed my parents was connected to these people. So I grew up, my grandmother used to tell me, because she didn't know the difference between the nation of Islam and the religion of Islam. So my grandmother used to tell me, Muslims killed your mother and father. So I grew up having hatred towards Muslims out of my ignorance. I used to say I would never be a Muslim. I hate Muslims. They killed my parents because of what I was taught. You know what I mean? So... Alhamdulillah, my mother and father, they followed Malcolm X. Once he became Muslim, he went to Hajj. You know Malcolm X? Yeah, I know Malcolm yeah, yeah. Once Malcolm X went to Hajj and he came back to America, he said, this is true Islam. My mother and father became followers of him. They became Muslim and they died on Islam, alhamdulillah. 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 So I was raised after the death of my parents in church. My grandmother, you know, she used to take me to church as a kid, force me to go to church, yeah. say that I'm a Christian. I grew up, you know, going into church until I reached a certain age. I just said, you know what? I don't believe in religion. I only believe in God. So my teenage years, that's how I live my life. I said, I, I, I'm not going to accept no religion. I only believe in God. And that's how I was living my life. Okay. And, um, and then one day, you know, I, I was in a recording studio. I was intoxicated. Like I was, I was drinking, you know, yeah. I was, you know, I was this American culture. This is yeah. what we do. We get drunk, you know, so I was <laughs> drinking and um, I got into a fight with my brother, my little brother, and it was a Muslim, uh, American Muslim, black American Muslim who stopped the fight, you know, and then he asked me, what's your name? I said, my name is Muta, you know, because my parents gave me the name Muta and he was like, um, that sound like a Muslim name. Are you a Muslim? I just said, yeah, I'm a Muslim. I was drunk. I I would I said anything. I just wanted him to stop talking mm -hmm. to me. And then he was like, well, I'm a Muslim. <laughs> and I want to invite you to the masjid and this and this and that. And he gave me his number and I gave him my number. And he would call me consistently like, are you going to come to the mosque? Are you going to come to the mosque? And remind you, I thought Muslims killed my mother and father. So I, yeah. the last place I want to go to is a mosque. So I was like, you know what? Two things that this guy did. He stopped the fight with my brother. I don't know if you guys heard of the singer Seal. You know Seal? Yeah, yeah. Mm. From London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the, you know, the, the, he was, you know, the pop yeah, singer with them two cuts on his yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. This guy actually put a song together with Seal and us. And he was like, um, we're not even going to charge you money, but you must come to the mosque. Mm. This is what he told me. Like, in he order to pay. Pushing you to the, yeah, he said, you must go to the mosque. So one day I was like, you know what? Let me just go to the mosque. I remember, I took a gun. I put it in my waist. True story. Mm. I called my friends, like 20 of us. We went there because it was, it was in LA. We went to the mosque and I walked in and I seen like um, different cultures. Remember, in America, every church is divided by different ethnicities. Mm. Yes. So black church, you're only going to see black people. White church, you're only going to see white people. But when I went into the mosque, I seen black people, white people, Arabs, Pakistanis. So I was shocked. Like, you know, what type of religion is this? Everybody's inside of this place. Yeah, yeah. And they all like getting along good. You don't, I never seen anything like that. So I went into the mansion and it was time to pray. Yeah. He was like, you should pray with us. And I was like, um, I don't, don't even know, know how, how to pray. Like, like yeah. he was like, no, just do whatever you see us do. Mm -hmm. But when you put your face on the floor, you praying to God. So whatever you want, just ask God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at this particular time of my life, I was very successful for music. I had houses, I had brand new cars, I had a lot of money. But at that time of my life, I was the most depressed, unhappy. I was very unhappy. And and, and before I went to the mosque, every night I would go and I would I remember sometime I would fall asleep thinking like why don't why I'm not happy. And I'm in a brand new like nice house, four, five, six bedroom house and you know what I mean? And the gated community. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I don't know why I'm like deep in my heart I'm sad. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the answer. You know what I mean? So so when I did pray, I, I remember saying, God, please guide me to anything that's going to bring me my happiness. I would have never thought it would be Islam, though. I just said, I prayed to God and I would leave. So when I left, the brother, he gave me a lot of literature of Islam. Mm. You know, I took it home and I remember I drove to my home and I started reading it. And the more that I read, the more I was getting, I didn't want to stop reading it because mm. now I'm reading about the prophets. My grandmother used to teach me about you know, Adam, Isaac, Jacob, Ishaq, Ibrahim, mm -hmm. Musa, like these names I knew as a Christian. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, Muslims believe in these prophets? All of them, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was surprised. And then when it got to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I started reading, mo learning more, like, wow. Then eventually I was, I had to call a brother. I was like, bro, I'm ready to become Muslim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I knew then, like, the reason why I'm not happy 
is because I'm not living my life the yeah. way I should be living my life. You know, yeah. so mm. not too long after that, I became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. 2002. Yeah. MashaAllah. And I, I truly <laughs> believe in that. I truly believe there's a big difference between being born a Muslim and searching for Islam and being yeah. a Muslim. You know, it's a big difference. You know, some people are brought up on Islam. True. Maybe they get discovered something and maybe they don't. Some some people, you know, become atheists. Some people yeah. just don't practice anymore. Yes. They yes, they yeah. have this disbelief, disbelief in them. Yes. But Islam is the only religion that you don't have to follow like you're following a manual. True. Mm. You have to follow with your heart. You have to, this axis between you and yeah. God, you have to believe 100%. When True. you're praying, you have to believe 100% when you're asking God for something. True. You have to believe. You directly to God. Yeah. But yes. some people are, are, are treating it as they're treating the manual. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Duhur, to Isha, uh, for Isha, to yes. Fajr, for yes. Asr. That's what I'm going to do. It's, yeah. it's in the manual. No feelings, they nothing. Do, yeah. they, they, just, the, yeah. the they just do moves, you know. Yeah, they just do moves. Yes, uh, no, we got to know why we're doing it, you know. Yeah. Um, even my kids, I ask my kids, I say, because... You know, as a convert, we know why we converted to Islam. Yes. And sometimes, you know, when you're born into something, you take it for granted. You yeah. know, sometimes. It's you the just, normal. Yes, yeah, the normal. So I asked yeah. my kids one day, I said, you know, why are you guys Muslim? And I was like, I hope you don't just say because your mother and father's a Muslim. And they said, yeah, yeah but that's the reason why we are a Muslim. <laughs> and that's when I realized, like, wait a minute. My kids is like these Muslim, born Muslim mentality. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to explain to them. I said, no, but <clears throat> you can't be a Muslim because of your mother and father. You have to know why you're a Muslim. You have to believe why you yeah. worship in Allah. You have to fill it in your heart. You have yeah. to study course, it. The, you know what I mean? The journey so, of uh, studying and learning and uh, praying. Yeah. yeah, but it's good in both because yeah. you have, for example, you have some people that some... Um, you know, you know, you have people that convert to the religion of Islam, but then we might have some things that we struggle with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That a born Muslim probably wouldn't struggle with. Exactly. You know, like, for example, a person might become Muslim, he was used to drinking. Yeah. It might be more difficult for him. Some people born Muslim never went through that fit now. Yeah. So it's good in both. Only Allah yeah. knows, you know yeah. what I mean, who's good and who's bad. Different tests. <laughs> yeah, because different yeah, everybody tests. have different tests. Different because tests. Allah, Allah, forgive me, I... Uh, I'm a Muslim, yeah, born I mean, a Muslim and everything. And and yeah. even though I'm descendant of uh, uh, Prophet Ali, peace be upon him. I'm, uh, Sharif. Prophet Ali? Uh, not Prophet. No, I'm about no, to say, no, boy. No, no, say. No. You might got to take Shahada again. <laughs> you think Ali or Prophet Stagullah? No, <laughs> Prophet Muhammad, Prophet. 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 I know, I know. Ali, Allah, and Ali, Allah. We love Ali. He's our grandfather. Yes, I got you, I got you. Hassan Hussein, these are grandfathers. I'm joking with you, bro. I knew exactly what you were trying to say. This is speaking English as a second language. This is what's going on. Yeah, so... That's that's a big responsibility sorry. to have this Sharif. house household yeah. name behind you. Yes, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't imagine this. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, so I I used to be this teenage boy that sorry. you know lived the life, to, to you know, <laughs> listening to <laughs> bad buying, music, uh, see it's cassette, you know, <laughs> smoking <laughs> cigarettes, doing whatever yeah. young boys do. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. and. One day I pray, two days I don't, sometimes a yeah. month, you know, yes. when I was in these teenage, but now, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, when I reconnected with God, yes. you know, yes. and, and I start and going to God as if I don't need nothing. I always need God, but I'm not coming to pray for you as I need something from you, but I need yeah. to connect yeah. with God. Worship. Worship. That's, but God loves when we need something from him, when yeah. we ask him. He wants he that. He wants of us course. to ask him. Sorry. So everything, yes. subhanAllah, when you start praying, and yes. I'm not saying this, this is what I felt, actually. This is what I experienced. All the sounds in my head mm. start to regulate. Now you start, it's like somebody have a list and sorry, a pen sorry, sorry. and they start regulating stuff. All yeah. the things, all the all the fears, all the future fears, all the past yeah. things that were stuck, they're, they're Tawakul, regulated. Tawakul. Tawakul. Yes. Tawakul. And, and you know, when yes. you pray five times a day, you disconnect your mind and worship Allah if you have uh, enough... Uh, that's what I, I I notice a lot about like born Muslims, we can say. Like I yes. notice a lot because you have the foundation. So majority of the time, they even when they go a little off, they always come back. Yes. Yeah. Like I have a lot of friends that, you know, that went to America, for example, from Saudi Arabia, and, and they might have tested some <laughs> things, but eventually they came back because from day one that's been installed in them. You foundation. know what I mean? So yeah. alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. 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 And I, I'm going <laughs> to ask you a couple of questions. It's, it's yes. just, uh, you know, uh, 
a one word answer. That's that's all. Just I mean. one word. That, just a one okay, word okay. answer. I'm gonna ask you things about Saudi Arabia. Yes. And then you're gonna give me just one one thing. Okay. okay. So what's what's <clears throat> your favorite culture in Saudi Arabia? Brotherhood. Brotherhood. What's your favorite food in Saudi Arabia? Mindy. Mindy. Uh, what's <laughs> what's your favorite season? Like you have summer, autumn. Winter. Winter, of course. Yeah. Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's um, what's your favorite city in Saudi Arabia? Medina. 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 Yes. Medina. <laughs> And uh, are you a gamer? No. No. Uh, what's your favorite coffee? Can I get Ethiopia, Colombia? I have yes. to do two answers here. Okay. <laughs> your, your favorite uh, beef cut? Beef cut? Yeah. Smoky Bears. Smoky. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that's all the questions I have for you. Uh, <laughs> have for now. Do, do, do you watch uh, sport? Saudi? Every once in a while, yes. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I watch sports every once in a while. I grew up, um, of course, Americans, we love basketball. Yeah. But since I moved here, I fell off. Because of the time difference, I don't really know too much about the basketball. I recently started watching football. Yeah. Soccer. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is the biggest sport in the world. Like yeah. I recently yeah. started. Actually, Ab Aziz, Abdelaziz, we went to our, we went to my first football game together in yeah. Real Madrid with Kareem Benzema. Oh, yeah. so we got invited out there. That was my first time. And now Kareem is in our team. He's in Jeddah. Not, never I thought in my lifetime. Cristiano yes. Ronaldo and Karim Benzema would be yeah, in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And now more is coming in our local leagues. You know, it's yes. Like, I, I must be. <laughs> this must this must be a dream or something like that. You know, it's like <laughs> more people are coming here. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, so your, your favorite team is my favorite team. Mm. Uh, uh, you, to you be honest, honest, I don't. I, I never. Now I'm I'm loyal. You should. Do my one. first my first football match I ever went to was with my friend Kareem Benzema. Yeah. So Iti, I'm an Etihad fan now. Ah. Alas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my Etihadi people. Yeah. This is an announcement. Because <laughs> I got I to be loyal. Like whoever introduced me to it, I'll yeah. stick with them. Yeah. yeah I, we're so happy that we had you here, man. Yeah, I'm it's happy to be really, here, man. Really, a pleasure of mine. You're like, uh, you know, a childhood superhero for me. <laughs> um, I'm starstruck. Me and my, Thank my you, man here, Barakat. Right. And uh, we're sorry if you were, you know, we took, we took a lot of no, your No, it was time. good. It was, uh, I, I didn't even pay attention to the time. Yeah, I have a small question if you yes, have brother. the time. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, can you tell us any, uh, we, we love Mike Epps. He's your yes, friend. Mike Epps, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have any story to share with us? To, uh, like funny, funny story, story like, we don't every know. Time. Funny story? Like Every time you remember Mike, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That man. You know, really, when, whenever yeah. we, the crazy part, usually when I'm around Mike, it's serious conversations. Oh. oh. Like it really not, it's, it's not, smart. yeah, it's, it's about You know what I mean? One time he called me, asked me to give him a copy of the Quran. I, I met him one day, gave him the Quran. So usually when I talked to him, it was always about serious, you know, about God, about the afterlife, you yeah. know? Mm. Um, but he's a good dude. I, I'll tell you a good story about Mike. When I first, um, um, I would say, I always wanted to live in a Muslim country. I tried many times, you know? Mm. Um, so maybe about 2008, I, I, I finally was out of my contract or 2007. I was stuck in a contract from a long time ago. I finally was able to get out of contract. I walked away from like, you know, all my royalties and money that I was supposed to get from the music industry. I left everything. And um, I went to Abu Dhabi. My wife family, they Emiratis. They okay. from Abu Dhabi, you know? So I, I went to Abu Dhabi and um, I was planning to come to Saudi Arabia. There was a person like, look, come to Saudi Arabia. We're gonna, you're gonna move here, this and this and that, et cetera. I packed everything. You know, I, I'm talking about I, the crazy thing, stuff that belonged, that Tupac gave me, like stuff that he gave me. I put everything in a, what is it? A, a What is it called when you a ship container? it? On a, a container. A container. And I shipped it to Daman because I thought I was going to live in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. So I told the guy who invited me, I said, but um, I'm going to travel first, take my wife. Her father was in Canada. We go say bye to him. And then I'm going to go to the Emirates, you know, go see my in-laws for a little bit. And then yeah. I'm going to come to Saudi Arabia. You know, I think I had my last $10,000, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, but I was like, I'm out of America. Peace, America. I'm out. Peace so out. I shipped everything out there. I went to the UAE and the guy who invited me, you know, he stopped answering my call. Like he was a guy who had a job and everything for me. Stop answering my call. I'm like, that's strange. You know, then he would, when he do answer, 
you know, now I can laugh at it. When he do answer, he was like, man, your visa's in the embassy. Go to the embassy. So I go to the embassy in the UAE. They like, brother, we not, we being honest, nobody sent you a visa. This is my first time hearing about how the visa works. So I'm like, what's going on? So eventually the guy, he wasn't being truthful. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's up? Yeah, what the was fuck? it? Harami. Uh, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Everything from Allah. It was, it, it, I look at it, khaira. It's khaira. Khaira. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's from Allah. Maybe my sins is, was did it. You know yeah. what I mean? So anyway, so the guy eventually didn't give me the visa, so I got stuck in the Emirates. Now my $10,000, it disappeared. So now I'm stuck. I have to leave the Emirates. Emirates, you, you only have a certain amount of times you can leave and come back with American passport and get the, yeah. and get the visa. Shout out to my in-laws because they was very supportive. They look, if you want to live here for the rest of your life, you can live here for the rest of your life. <laughs> but for me as a man, you don't feel good. Like, yeah, yeah. how can I live like, as, I, I can't do this. I, I got to, you know, I don't want them to think I married a, a woman from their family and now I'm living off of them. Mm-hmm. I don't, I can't do that. Like, I felt shameful. So I was like, you know what? I have to leave. But I, I don't even have money. Like, how am I going to get an airline ticket to go back to America? I'm, I'm dead broke. Mm-hmm. So I'm calling people. I'm calling friends. I'm like, you know, let me just borrow the money. One thing about me, alhamdulillah, I'm a hustler. I, I figure away by Allah's permission, mm. I'm going to make some halal money. So I'm like, let me borrow Great the money. Smart. And everybody I know, like, we don't have it. It was a good wake-up call because people who I thought was my friends was like, we don't have it. Click, we don't have it. Bye. So then I called Mike Epps. You know what I mean? I, mm. and, I, and me, I don't want to, I, I don't like asking people for anything. Mm. I, I prefer to eat dirt before I ask you for a penny, but I have no choice. Mm. I, at this particular time, it's my wife, my son, Muhammad was only six months old. I need to get out of the country or they're going to find me. And if they find me, maybe my in-law is going to pay for it. So I'm like, I got to get out of this mm. mess. So I said, I have no choice. I have to borrow the money. So I called my caps. I said, look, let me, Um, I just need money to get an airline ticket for me, my wife, my kid can sit on my lap and I'm going to pay you back. No matter what, I promise I'll pay you back. He said, what do you need it for? I said, two airline tickets, this and this and that. He called me back. He was like, I bought three airline tickets for you, your son, and you don't have to pay me a penny back. Oh, I was like, wow. Like, and even when I told him, like, bro, I got to pay you back, he won't take anything. Mm. So I, in return, so I'll go back to America. Remember, I packed everything. So all my belongings, my clothes, literally, like all mm. my clothes is gone. Like the only thing I had is some thobes. So now I'm going to this area, Valencia, California, like where my brother live and I'm walking the streets with a thobe on. Everybody looking at me because I have no clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody's cars are stopping. They thought like, like what is happening? <laughs> Everywhere I go, I have to wear a thobe. I couldn't even afford to buy clothes. And um, I went and tried to, got it. I, I tried to get a job, you know, nothing worked out. And then I had this bracelet that Tupac gifted me. And I was like, you know what? It's either this bracelet or my family, I gotta mm. like I gotta sell this bracelet. I have no other choice. So I called Mike Epps because he I knew he would love it. You know what I mean? I said, Mike Epps, I gotta sell this bracelet. It's pop bracelet. He like, bro, I'll buy it off you right now. Mm. As you know, recently they just sold one of pop rings for one point two million dollars. Yeah. Wow. So the bracelet right now probably is worth millions for Mike Epps. <laughs> <laughs> Hamdulillah, he yeah, deserved it. You know what I mean? Man, so I, I sold it to him and I was able to get the cash, able to pay him back, and eventually. I just eventually got back on my feet. I started, bro, I went from, I went from selling like oils from, I bought from the Emirates. I had to swallow my pride and just like, you know, started selling things, selling clothes mm. to eventually I got back on my feet. You know what I mean? So this is the respect I have for Mike Epps. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? That's a real because friend, right? He's a, he, Man, he, Allah he, guide him I mean, to Islam. I mean, Allah guide him. So shout out to Mike Epps. Shout, shout out, out to Mike Epps. We want to see you in Saudi Arabia. One of my- Baby. <laughs> <laughs> we got to bring him here, inshallah. Yeah, so, inshallah. What about the words that you stopped using them in English and turned to Arabic? What words I start using in English? But just give us two. Then we will <laughs> stop. Uh, hayak Allah. I like hayak this. Allah. <laughs> Allah hayy. I like it. Allah hayy. We're and happy to have you. We're you, really brother. sorry for, for the time, man. No problem, yeah. brother. No problem. No I, I problem. wish we could, uh, this could happen forever. Yeah. Uh, I inshallah. know you're a busy guy. Yeah. Thank we'll you. Be, I'll come again on the show. Inshallah. inshallah. We're inshallah. honored inshallah. having you, man. Thanks yeah. for having me, brother. Really make my dream come true. Seeing you in front of me. The pleasure was mine. And thank you so much. And very good to have you, man. Very good brother. <laughs> may, may you have peace in all of your life. I mean all of it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>